Welcome, listener. This is Sebastian Northwell here today with Sarah Wallace. Hello. And Esso Callahan. Hello. Here to discuss the latest book in the Fae and Human Relations series, Fire Spells Between Friends. So right off the bat, what is Fire Spells Between Friends and how does it fit into the wider Fae and Human Relations series? Fire Spells Between Friends is the second book in Fae and Human Relations, and it tells the story of Wyndham's older brother, Emrys, who has been having a secret relationship with the writer of Torquil's Tribune, Torquil Pimpernel Smith. And so it tells the story of Torquil and Emrys' relationship and how they wind up falling in love. It is very fun for me as a reader that the author of The Biggest Scandal Sheet in Town is hiding the most scandalous (laughs) secret in town. (laughs) Yeah, it's a great twist. (laughs) This book, more than the other books in the series, we were holding tight for like keeping it a secret for a long time because we really did not want people to know that (laughs) twist. Yeah, so the big secret within the story, but also the secret just between ourselves, like kind of, you know, not spoiling who the story was about. So it would be a big surprise. I mean, spoiler alert, I've already read the dang thing. So I know how I feel about the surprise (laughs) very positively. How did you find readers enjoyed it when you were able to finally reveal that? And how did that feel to you to finally kind of have that weight taken off you? It was a great relief. The wait between breeze spells and fire spells is the longest we will hopefully have for a while. And so it was really hard keeping that a secret for like, what, 10? Well, I mean, I guess we didn't have to keep it a secret for 10 months, but it was about 10 months between books. But it was a huge relief to finally be able to talk about it. And it was fun to see people get excited. People were especially excited about Torquil, I think. Yeah. And so it was really nice to see people excited to read about Torquil's story. And there were, like, two people who guessed that it was Torquil and Emerus somehow. I still don't know how they guessed it. Somebody guessed on Goodreads, and somebody else was like, oh, I totally called it. I'm like, how How did you call We didn't know. We didn't know we wrote Breeze Spells. How did you possibly get that? So. <laughs> Incredible work. <laughs> Someone's a sleuth. Yeah, it was very impressive. <laughs> yeah. So when did you know as authors that Torquil and Emerus were perfect for each other, and how did you decide to pair them together, and what made them your choice to star in the sequel to Breed Spells and Bridegrooms? Yep, so we had finished writing Breed Spells, and we weren't exactly sure what was going to happen next as far as continuing the series or what we were going to do. So as we've mentioned a couple of times before, there was about like a two week period where we just kind of were were done writing and we just kind of were like figuring out what was going to happen next. And I really think we both loved Torquil in the first book so much that I think it was just kind of like an unspoken understanding that Torquil was going to have to have their own story at some point, be it the next one or somewhere down the line, but it was going to have to happen. Because we just really, Sarah got the opportunity to write them, you know, obviously from their Tribune chapters, but also just like their little kind of peaks in the story that we got to see them. There's two moments in Bree Spells where they show up in the actual story. And I don't know, there there just was a lot, a lot to unfold with their character. And I think both of us knew that it's just like, yeah, this is someone we need to explore a little bit more. And so, you know, I had that in mind. And I just kind of, I don't know, inspiration hit me. And I sent Sarah this massively long (laughs) message. (laughs) It was amazing. And I was basically like, okay, so about Torquil, what if, (laughs) and this was one of those situations where really, honestly, truly, that very first inspiration slash idea slash message that I sent to Sarah, it really didn't change that much from like as we were writing it, like we added to it and there's, you know, more stuff that happens along with their relationship. But ultimately that like base idea that we came up with that stayed solid throughout. And that's, I think any author will tell you like a lot of things can change from that initial idea. Certainly it happened with Breeze Spells and, you know, Sarah and I have both gone through that, I think individually and together as we've come up with new stories and and that kind of thing. But this one, I don't know, there was just something that clicked that I was just like, I think this is it. And that's what it became. (laughs) 
Torkel really does cut a very compelling figure, even with just the brief glimpse we get of them in three spells. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Thank you. They're really fun to write. And then Emrys comes in as kind of the, if you will, jock older brother of our <laughs> previous protagonist, Wyndham. Yes, decidedly. Yep. Yep. <laughs> if this was a, a high school or college AU, he would definitely be like the football captain and Torkel would be like the journalism major. <laughs> Yeah. Who runs the school paper. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Torquil, head of the yearbook committee. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. Yes. So, Torquil and Emrys are lovers long before the first chapter of Fire Spells, which is an interesting choice in a genre where it's more common to have the structure of meet cute, fall in love, happily ever after, the end. So, what made you decide to make them an established couple beforehand, and what were some of the rewards and challenges you encountered while writing their story as a result? So, the decision to make them an established couple was actually Shannon's in the initial text. Part of the text was, what if? Because like, we had written Bree Spells, and there's a scene in Bree Spells where Emrys and Wyndham are talking, and Wynne points out that Emrys has never been written about in the Tribune, which was an oversight on my part when I was writing the <laughs> Tribune. It was not intentional. <laughs> in the initial draft I just happened to kind of forget I didn't really know who Emrys was except he was kind of a dick so I didn't yeah. have much to say about it <laughs> uh, from Torquil's point of view so uh, Shannon texts me with like what if Emrys walks into the press building and says you need to start mentioning me in your paper more often and like it's revealed that they've been lovers so that was like the pitch for the book which obviously I was like absolutely. fucking <laughs> um, it's a very strong pitch is the thing it's such a good pitch it was such a good start to the story and i think the reward of it is that like writing romances are fun because it's it's fun to write a relationship kind of blooming between two characters and it's fun to write relationship developing but it's also can be tricky to write characters feasibly falling in love in the span of you know certain hundred thousand or so words it's kind of like when you go back and rewatch all the 90s disney movies and you're like oh yes. they got married in like a week <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly if we if we actually map this out on the timeline right <laughs> this was three days exactly and like i'm demi-romantic per like so i uh, it's like it takes me a very long time to fall in love with people. So writing characters falling in love in my head, I'm like, this should really take years. But you can't do that in a romance novel. So <laughs> it was nice that they were basically already had a relationship going because we were able to, like, they basically started at an advanced level that most couples don't get to start at, which was really nice. So I think that was, for me, probably the biggest reward. I don't really know what the challenge I actually think this was one of the easier stories to write in terms of relationship building. So I don't know that it was challenging. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think we removed a lot of the challenge just for writing purposes because we figured out very, very quickly that we are really good at writing friends to lovers. <laughs> and so I think that just, I mean, that first chapter is, to this day, one of my favorite things that I've ever written. Like, that entire chapter is just, I'm so proud of it, and it was so easy for me to write, because I just, I don't know, that, like, soft, pre-existing, just connection that they had, that I was able to start the book off with, is really, really special. And, I don't know, it just worked out so perfectly. The, the friends to lovers really <laughs> were really that's our 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 soft spot I think it is um, as you know maybe individual but certainly as co-authors that has just I don't know we both love that kind of story and so I guess being able to write that back and forth it almost felt like challenging each other or like dueling each other <laughs> as far as like who could write the most tender soft <laughs> romantic <laughs> situations back and forth between them. And I think it really paid Truly. off for, for both of us and also for the readers because it was just like, all right, that was really sweet. What can I do next to keep this going? And so it just felt like a really easy, fun back and forth 
of just enjoying that from beginning to end. And I guess the only challenge that comes to mind really is just a lot of romances that is the plot, is them falling in love, you know, is that development of the relationship. And so because that was already established between them, now it does change over the course of the story. But as far as their connection, it's there from page one. So really, it was just figuring out how we wanted to build the rest of the story around that to keep it interesting. You know, like they had to have their own individual challenges to get us to the end of the story. And I honestly think because the relationship was established, it really helped us make the characters very... Like, they had their own stories going on. It was very much like Emrys had Emrys's stuff and Torkoal had Torkoal's stuff. And yes, they had that joint connection within the relationship part of it. But it really gave us that opportunity to explore the characters as individuals as well. And so far, we've had a lot of good feedback on that element, too, that, like, readers appreciate that they are actual people with actual real-life things going on, and it's not just about their relationship throughout the book. Yeah, it gives you kind of an opportunity to explore more avenues than you would if you had to start from the very, very beginning of their relationship. And it is just kind of, as a reader, the experience of, like, sinking into something established but isn't static yes which like also very much appreciated agreed and i think shannon with the first chapter shannon really did a great job of setting the tone for the book in terms of the tenderness in that first chapter and the banter so that really helped in terms of their relationship the whole book was filled with this tenderness and this playful banter that was super fun to write because banter's fun. <laughs> and so it was fun to write two characters who know each other really well and tease each other and aren't afraid to be vulnerable sometimes. Yeah. Because like even in the very first chapter, like there's some vulnerability there. So it was really fun to be able to dig into parts of the book that typically as writers you don't get to write until like the second or third act of the story. So it was nice to be able to hit the ground with affection and tenderness and playful teasing. And so it was a good time. I almost want to call it like a character building speed run, except it never feels like you're speed running. It feels like everything's just kind of unfolding very naturally. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah, I love that. That is nice. So what was something that surprised you while writing this book? For me, it was Torkel's character because I had sort of had it in my head from writing the Tribune and writing the scene that I wrote of them in Bree Spells and the scene that Shannon wrote in Bree Spells is they're kind of enigmatic, they're mysterious, they're witty. And first off, writing very intelligent characters is difficult. It's so hard. <laughs> it's, it's so, so hard. hard to write so characters hard. who are smarter than everyone else because it's like, wait, am I smarter than everyone else? I don't know what I am. <laughs> so there's that. So that was something that I, like, once I got to Torkoal's scene, like, Torkoal's point of view, I'm like, oh, shit, I have to write a smart <laughs> character. Like, oh, no. <laughs> and <laughs> I, I had planned for them to be this kind of wry, sarcastic character all the time, and then it wound up kind of immediately them not being that way. Torkoal's very first chapter, I don't have them acting that way by themselves. So it immediately put me into this, like, oh, well, okay, so the wry, sarcastic, witty part of them is, like, a mask, so so they clearly take that mask off for Emrys because that was shown in the very first chapter. So like, who else do they eventually take that mask off for? And so that wound up being kind of part of Torkoal's story was the complexity of their character in terms of who they show to the world and why they're so reclusive is because they can't keep up that facade very much. I don't know. So that surprised me because I really expect them to be a very different character. I think the angst was a lot easier to write <laughs> than a character <laughs> sort of like standoffish and clever all the time. Because I, I often write angsty characters inadvertently. They're fun to write. So I think that Torquil's angst and really their character in general, I think, kind of surprised me. Honestly, my biggest surprise, I think, was actually not not to do necessarily with the story itself or like what actually happens inside the book. But I think my biggest surprise, pleasant surprise, was just the way that my writing relationship with Sarah grew as we wrote this book in particular, because we wrote Bree Spells so quickly and we had such a good time with it that by the end, we had decided 
basically we were going to continue this project because from the beginning of it, it was just kind of like Sarah was all ready to, you know, make this a long series, but I was more <laughs> of the, the just like, well, let's see how Reese Spells goes and then we can figure out the rest after that. But I think just, I don't know, I think we really found a lot of like niche areas that we really, really enjoy writing in this book. And it gave us an opportunity to use things that we were comfortable with because, you know, Bree Spell started off with a prompt. So we basically had, you know, this idea in our head of what this book needed to be. And of course, we made it our own. But ultimately, there were some challenges writing Bree Spells just because of our preferences for writing really soft stories and that kind of thing. And so I feel like just having that opportunity you know, Fire Spells was our first chance to just start with a unique personal idea and write together. And so I think the combination of Torquil being such a lovable character that Sarah had created, and then my idea that I had and kind of that was my creation. And so just the process of getting to go through both of those things, all of it together, I was just really surprised by, you know, I thought Bree Spells was fun, but Fire Spells was probably of the four books, I think it ended up being at least my favorite just for that alone of just like the experience of writing that book together. And it was really surprising because I didn't know how it was going to go. And I, I am, I'm still very much in awe of what we accomplished with that book. Honestly, I am too. That was quite a feat. <laughs> <laughs> so what made you most excited to write this story? The plot itself was a really fun one, starting off with a secret relationship I've never written anything like that before. I don't think either of us had really written a secret. Mm-mm. Oh, no, that's not true. You'd written a secret mm-hmm. relationship sort of in, in well, Bella. But like, kind of, kind of, yeah. But not quite the same. But this was like right. kind of a salacious sort of plot <laughs> to start off with like secret <laughs> lovers with like a really well-known high-born character who has a secret lover that no one knows about is a fun premise to write. And then those two characters falling in love is the sort of thing that I would probably pick up if I was a reader. (laughs) Because I'd be like, ooh, secret relationship. This sounds exciting. Like, I just want to know all the, you know, all the gossip. So I think that excited me. And like, Brief Spells and Bridegrooms was initially going to be an enemies to lovers. It didn't wind up quite being enemies. But as Shannon said, friends to lovers is really our strong suit, probably. And enemies to lovers was hard to write, even though it didn't turn out to be true enemies to lovers, probably. But even, like, dislike to lovers was challenging to write because neither of us really liked writing people who were fighting at the beginning. It was really difficult to write those scenes. And so I was excited to write, like, oh no, these two, they like each other from the very beginning, and they actually (laughs) never don't like each other. So, like, that was fun to start off with. The fact that they like each other is the conflict. (laughs) Right, exactly. (laughs) Truly, truly. What a great problem to have. It's also, as like a queer historical romance reader, secret relationship, forbidden relationship has kind of been a fact of history, but here you still get that like hidden relationship, secret relationship spice without kind of the doom and gloom of the historical setting because we've branched off into this queer normative fantasy world. Exactly. No one is going to be imprisoned or punished for this. There's just going to potentially be some social ostracization due to classism, but that's the the biggest real risk. Yeah. Lower stakes. A nice, chill, cozy time. Exactly. I think I was probably most excited about just continuing the world that we had built in the first book, because I think we really crafted something special. We both got to bring our unique kind of preferred magic systems into the story. You know, we had set up so many different things that it was just really exciting to kind of continue that into another story and keep building on that and work with, you know, characters that were familiar because we get a lot of Wynn and Roger carried over into book two, a lot of, you know, familiar faces, but then also getting to explore a whole other set of main characters within this world that we had so lovingly crafted was really exciting. Kind of get to expand the cast. Yes. Yes. Yep. So now that you have finally let the cat out of the bag, what are you hoping (laughs) readers take away from this book? I think ultimately with pretty much all of our books, but possibly especially this one, we really hope people come away from the book feeling cozy and comforted 
And I don't know, my favorite reviews are the ones that say reading this book was like wrapping yourself up in a blanket or reading this book was like drinking a hot cup of tea. And so I hope readers come away from the book feeling feeling good and feeling cozy and like the world's a little brighter after having read the book. For sure. That's always the goal. <laughs> yeah. I think one other really big takeaway for me, and I'm sure Sarah will probably agree, Torquil is non-binary, and we made the decision at the very beginning to use they, them pronouns only for Torquil throughout the series, and, you know, that was a decision we made in part to make it easier for readers just to kind of follow along with which character we were speaking about with these pronouns, but I don't know, I really hope that readers kind of enjoy getting to experience that as someone who uses they them pronouns as the main character throughout you know because I I know that both Sarah and I really kind of are enjoying bringing visibility to some things that we wish that we saw in books more often and just helping people get comfortable with things that maybe they haven't experienced before but also to see themselves in our characters because certainly Sarah uses they them pronouns and we have lots of readers and friends who do as well. And so that was really important for us to hold fast to that and make an example really of just like, look, it's possible. You know, there's this whole really soft romance and that not a single time ever comes up as an issue. It's not really a thing at all. And I think we both had a really good time writing that kind of story so that our friends and readers can see themselves in that situation if that's something they relate to as well. Absolutely. Hard agree. Also, uh, a fun fact for listeners, <laughs> I was actually going through my own gender journey right as we started to write this book. And so writing Torquil as non-binary was a, a mutual decision. And it was also like, it was really fun to be able to explore that with a character as I was exploring that on a personal level too. Hell yeah. <laughs> So what do readers have to look forward to in the Fey and Human Relations series as it continues? Well, we have four novels written for the series. It's going to be a four-book series. Each book takes place in a different season. So Breeze Spells took place in autumn. Fire Spells takes place in winter. So we have spring and summer left. And they can expect more coziness, more soft stories, more queer romance. The next two books will be released next year. You can look at our pinned posts on Instagram to get some tentative, not release dates, but release seasons, <laughs> <laughs> at least. So, yeah, they can expect more magic, more romance between fae humans and fae human characters. <laughs> fae and human and fae human characters. Fantastic. And if folks would like to snag a copy of Fire Spells for themselves, where can they do so? It is available on ebook audiobook, paperback, hardcover, large print, and dyslexia print. It's available at all retailers. However, it won't be available for pre-order for Kindle, uh, just by the way we're distributing it. And um, I don't think it'll be available for pre-order on Audible. But other than those two platforms, if you have a favorite vendor, you should be able to find it for pre-order. Oh, and if you want a signed copy, signed by both of us, you can go to sarahwallacewriter.com. And there are links on the books tab that will take you to my merch shop where you can pre-order the book from me directly, either paperback or hardcover, and Shannon and I will sign it. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining me and telling us all about Torkel and Emrys' Torrid Romance. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having us. A delight as always. And excited to talk to you again soon. 